Yo, what up? It's your boy, when JJ Stone, a.k.a. Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. And uh, football's back, and I'm so happy, and I'm so excited. And uh, first of all, let me just apologize for any man in your life that's going to ignore you, and any woman in your life that's a diehard that's going to ignore you, because they done messed up. You got football Thursday, Friday. You got college on Saturday. You got Sunday. You got Monday. You got to deal with us on Tuesday. I don't know. Be a good parent and adult and be responsible on Wednesday. Just show up to your job because football is taking over and it's absolutely insane that football is trying to be on every night of the week. I can't really stand it, but I love it at the same time. Say what's up to people, Jason. What's going on, man? I'm trying to force hoodie season right now with football being back. I want that to happen right now. <laughs> you out here crying and complaining because it's 85, then it's 95, and yeah. you got hoodies on, no I hoodies know. on. I'm confused. Uh, Harry's always got his mustache on. Say what's up to the people. <laughs> mustache on, no sleeves. You know what I'm saying? It's still a little warm out. I still, I still right. use when I can. Yeah, Harry's hanging on to someone with all his might, bro. He's like, Absolutely. look, I got four rays left, brother. Don't you take my <laughs> I need the hoodie to hide some, uh, you know, some stuff. You know, <laughs> my hoodie ain't hiding nothing. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, I only I got the hoodie on in case I get thrown out of plan. I need help with a parachute. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> my hoodie's big, but that hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah guys uh nfl is absolutely bonkers this week obviously we're going to talk about the eagles and the packers being in brazil um uh how, are you okay harry am i okay <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm okay i'm okay Okay, you live in philadelphia it's a, it's a philadelphia it's a very yeah. dangerous city <laughs> Uh, I'm safe. Are, I'm safe. You, you are a pedestrian bike rider. You know what I mean? I, I am. I take out Ubre six times out here in these streets. Hey. So, I'm just saying, Philly's a dangerous. Ubre just got here. You know what I'm saying? I've been I've been out in the streets That's biking. True. So That's true. <laughs> That's true. Ubre is a rookie. He don't know. How I know. To get I know where. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Harry. Harry like the white ninja out here, boy. He just be skipping the dip. Head on the swivel. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's around me. Oh, that's funny. Playing old school Frogger on the bike. I mean, <laughs> shoot. That's, that's how it be sometimes, for sure. Um, but, you know, it, it's just there's been so much made of the fear of Brazil. Now, you know, we've all traveled and gone places. Every city, every place that you don't know mm-hmm. could put you in a position of danger. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy out there in San Francisco, the place for 49ers, just got shot in the chest. He's He's in a dangerous city. Hey, guys. Don't go outside in the city. Don't take your phones or your wallets out in San Francisco. Like nobody would really say that, but that's what's going on. That's what happened. It's yeah. actually a problem. So, I mean, hearing Slay talk, uh, Hertz, Brown, like when you hear all the guys, I'm like, the PR team did an amazing job <laughs> scaring the Philadelphia. Yeah, seriously. Because they, they, don't go outside. No. Yeah. Don't go outside. And I'll tell you, they really, they really trying to keep them from is that booty, 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 booty. Yeah, life. exactly. <laughs> you know, the carnival. <laughs> yeah. Really, what you got to worry about is losing your wallet and catching an STD because that's yep. what's really going down. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just like every other city. Oh, somebody might rob you. Okay, someone might rob you in in the small town. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's it's just funny because there is a lot of you know fun nightlife activities out there, and if you wanted to keep guys from going out and trying those experiences and maybe making a false step, you scare them to death where they don't want to do anything. They're already yeah. getting down there on Wednesday. So Wednesday they're treating like they're Saturday, and then Thursday is going to be like a walkthrough, uh, extra back-to-back Saturday, 10-hour flight, got to get hydrated, you know, all that weird stuff that's going on. You got to get acclimated, but super exciting. Uh, Harry, you ever been to Rio? No, I would love I would love to go to Rio one day. I mean, again, like you're talking about, that's the that's the fear. I think with more than them being in danger was that they'd be out there getting partying and that, that affecting the game. So, I, like you said, I'm I'm kind of happy that they're scared. I'm curious to see because you know, we know Birds fans travel, so they're going to be in Rio. That's I think where we hear the real stories about like what it's really like out in the streets, like with the Birds fans being out there. So I'm I'm like I'm excited to hear about those. So right now, Twitter's supposed to be down, but it seems like people are tweeting. Um, 
the whole not wearing green thing for gang violence was a blown out of proportion thing, basically held to rival soccer teams coming into town wearing the color. Oh, okay. uh, not so much as just wearing green, which is like, I'm like, okay, because Brazil's colors are yellow. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on, but um, that seems to be a non issue. There seems to already be a lot of Eagle fans down there. I know Packers travel very well too. Yeah. Um, they have money and they have nothing else to do where they live. So, any place they can get out of um, at, at a Green Bay area, they'll, they'll be traveling. So I expect it to be a 50-50 crowd. Then you got whatever is going on down there because, you know, they, they they actually might love the Packers off the dumb thing that I shouldn't say, but they're Packers colors. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it, somebody was saying to be like, oh, you I was like, I don't know, bro. Like, you might have home cooking there just because of the color scheme. Well, the stadium they're playing in, that team wears black and white. That's why the Eagles oh. are Black and white scheme. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. That's why I keep chasing. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a little juicy tidbit. I mean, that's that's good to know. I, I feel like green. So sorry. Harry. Okay, no, you're good. The, the rival is green. Okay, I mean, so you know, maybe it'll be. I'm curious about the Brazil like people themselves, right? Like, there's definitely Eagles fans and probably Packers fans, not even just for the colors, like because they're a historic team, right? Green Bay, obviously Lambo, all that stuff. So I bet there's. There's got to be like an Eagles <laughs> Eagles fandom already, like a pocket of bars or things like that already in Rio. I would be really I'm not surprised if there was. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I got caught watching the uh, Phillies Blue Jays are on currently right now. And uh, we're not going to get an influx of viewers tonight because <laughs> the first inning went for nine <clears throat> days. <laughs> and this game is going to take forever to get over with. But um, it happens. It happens. Yeah, the Phillies battle back a little bit. Uh, gosh. You know, so I made a – I started doing my videos again today. I did one for the Eagles, and I did one for the Phillies. And for some reason, I accidentally didn't post it. And it actually worked out because I was trashing Tywin Walker, and I said how I didn't want to see him play anymore. And who they got out there pitching right now? Tywin Walker had to rescue him. He had to come oh. out. <laughs> see, some, my spidey sense was tingling and said, yo, don't go out there and embarrass yourself because 90% of my comments would have been like, well, this aged well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm myself here because y'all my people. But, I mean <laughs> – what it is um so we'll talk about the fills and then i guess but uh yeah the eagles are wearing their white tops black pants black helmets i thank you for saying what you said just because i did not know that yeah so i was like man y'all should went there all black like that would have been gangster with them wearing their yellow and green but uh i i, I respect the, the the reasoning because it was like i can't believe that it's a home game and the eagles are being forced i was like they're the home team they, they wear what they want yeah yeah, like, calm, like everybody gets so angry about everything. Yes. Like, it, just relax, bro. There, there's more important things going on, and the team knows what they're doing. So, that aside, the season's starting. What are you most excited about with the Eagles this year, Harry? I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm most excited about you know this. My, my initial reaction, you can tell, it's like there's definitely some some worries uh, going into this year. But I, I think I'm most excited about. The offense in general, just I think that's going to give me the most joy this year is the offense and you know, Saquon and just all the weapons we have. But low key, sneakily, I'm just going to be content or relieved in terms of uh, not necessarily excitement, but about just figuring it out with Nick Sirianni. Like this got to be this has to be the last year of like knowing whether or not he's the guy or not. So hopefully we just have our full picture at the end of the year, whether or not it's a successful season or not. We'll have our vision going forward. And that's, you know, that's what I'm hoping for. So. I was going to ask you a different question, Jason, but now I want to ask you another different question. Okay. Because <laughs> Harry's response is what a lot of the pundits in the city seem to have a feeling of. Everybody's got this, I don't know, what are the Eagles? What are they? What are <laughs> the Eagles? Like, you know, and that's local pundits too. Like, you know, Kyle Hurd, um, a lot of the bigger names that you hear, are everybody's kind of saying like, are the Eagles going to be explosive? Are they going to be a dud? So let's just, let's just rewind before we even talk about this game. After the way the season ended last year, <laughs> Steve, Steve, you made you know fired out of box, Steve. God damn, Steve. You're fired your day off, Steve. Oh, Steve. Uh, that's right. Get, 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 set an alarm. Get, get, <laughs> um, Jason, so let's just start with that. Um, how do you feel about the team after the collapse last year? Are you saying that's done, wipe it out, or you guys have got to come out and show me that it's changed? I'm definitely a that's done wipe it out on last season. I don't think what happened last year has anything 
that carries over to this season with the coaching changes and just the roster changes in general. Uh, you know, they've added different players. we got Saquon, so now they should be able to run the ball and hopefully get some more explosive runs, even though Swift was good. I don't think he's on Saquon's level. It remains to be seen if it's the Eagles' offense that and, caused Swift and, to not be as good. And just to cut you in one second, yeah. Swift's problem was he was predictable. Yeah. Swift's in, you're running. <clears throat> right. Swift's out, you're passing, Correct. possibly. Like, you right, do, so you, you yeah. have Saquon now, who's more of a weapon in the passing game, even though he's never really had a giant receiving season after his rookie year. Like, it's kind of, you know. He's a great we'll pass blocker, though, at the end of the day, whether he catches it or not. Right. He's going to blow somebody up. So, <laughs> Right, but it's just uh, – I want to see the offense be creative. Last year, the offense was so boring to watch. It was so predictable and so boring. So just anything new, really. I um, We're going to get new. Yeah. But I, I don't, don't even care if it's new. I don't care. You know what? When, when Nick Sirianni was in control, he ran the ball 77% in a game. Yeah. Then he passed the ball 77% right. in a game. He went an entire game without throwing one pass to Goddard. Like... His first four games of being an offensive coordinator and head coach were Madden childlike. <laughs> X, 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 X. Whatever the play was, he just hit X on every play. And yeah. it literally was like watching a kid play. Then when it, the offense got taken over, they were so dominant. They were so fluent. They had all the weapons, and they were using them, picking things apart. And if you would have ran the ball 77% of the time and you scored 40 points and ran up to 10, yeah. I wouldn't have cared. Right. But it just looked weird, and you weren't winning the right way, so it mm -hmm. felt bad. So uh, you're right. I, I want dominance coming out. I'm going to let everything go from last year until they start off the season 0-3. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Right, they exactly. Now i got to be like, yo, bro, we didn't fix nothing that happened uh, last year, and it wasn't Fletcher, and it wasn't Kelsey. Like, uh, it wasn't um, Hassan. You know, all the things they're yeah. trying to blame things on and the, and the change. If they're 0-3, the eyes are going to fall on Jalen. If mm. if they're zero and three, yeah. oh, that's just who takes it. The quarterback just takes it in football. That's just Nick. Nick could, <laughs> could Nick survive? I mean, geez. If they're zero and three. So yeah. you that's know, not but, we're, we're we're talking. Ivy, <laughs> you got me scared now saying that you brought it up <laughs> today. Nick Sirianni sounded like high school Harry to the fullest. He's never going to yeah. get the charge. Well, it's, I kept telling the guy, it's Friday night, you know, Friday night lights. It's a Friday night game. Yeah. Friday night game. We're going out there. We're going to play on a Friday. Like, you got to be excited because we're going to be on Friday. We're going to be a national team. Over. Like, bro, shut up. <laughs> they they play primetime games all the time. They're the right. Eagles. Like, you on this Friday thing, high school yeah. Harry, is driving me crazy. And the way he speaks enrages me. And I forgot <laughs> how much I hate hearing him talk. But having Vic speak. And then hearing Kellen Moore speak makes me hate listening to anything this man says. So if you're not winning, you are out. If they start 0-3 and I've got to listen to Nickisms, Nick I might sit outside the Nova Care Center with trash cans. Yeah. I, don't know, I know that's for a certain uh, 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 demographic, <laughs> and, but I might join it. So I mean. we better not start out 0-3. <laughs> so to your point of both of you, I was trying to wash that away and give my full spirit to – Go birds! It's Eagle season. We back, baby. Fuck everybody else. But the, it was so bad last year that I have to at least understand everyone else's apprehension. Like, listen to Jaworski today talk about. I was like, "Do you even like the Eagles, bro?" Right. But at the same time, I gotta say, well, damn, what we saw late is different. So you 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 compare that with the Packers start off slow, then they got hot, and yeah, they went and beat the trash Cowboys, but they also gave away their next playoff game. So are they thinking to themselves, man, we, we fell apart and we just we hurt ourselves and we could have had a we could have had a, a bigger moment. Or are they thinking, dog, we're good. We we started rolling late. Now we're just gonna roll into the season and start on all cylinders. Because they're a young team. So I, I think we need to go out there and hit them in the mouth early just to set a tone with them. Because they're coming off their season feeling pretty good about themselves. We're coming off our season feeling bad about ourselves. And I, we got a lot to show and prove. So, I mean, who do you trust more to, to prepare them, like LaFleur or, or Nick, right? I mean, I think that's a part of it, too. It's like I trust LaFleur to have these guys, like, have the mentality the first game of the year that this is a big deal. We're in Brazil. This is an opportunity to beat the Eagles, you know, whatever. Like, that's the type of stuff I believe LaFleur is – 
you know, making these guys feel and believe. Nick, like you said, he's just saying whatever. He's just like talking about the Friday Night Lights stuff. I mean, he's probably saying that to them, you know, like not not just to us. He's probably saying that stuff to them, which is not necessarily the best thing that I want to hear. So I don't know, man. Like, and think about Jalen. I love Jalen. I think he's a really good player. I think he's, you know, I'm not necessarily sure how great yet. But Jordan Love, again, I've heard him talk about football, and this man knows how to read off defenses, knows how to throw the ball. I mean, I I am not super, super uh, – I saw your, you post the score earlier, BG, on your on your story. What did you say, 34-17? <laughs> Bro, I don't know about that, man. I said 34-24. I don't even feel confident in that either. So, I don't First know, all, man. Just to shut you up. Yes, please. Let me get back, me get back to Steve. Steve, you were late. <laughs> we have talked about the fear and, and all that stuff for no reason, Steve. Look, this is why I'm docking your pay, Steve. You can't come here late and then talk about things we talk about. That's the stuff that the rookie fans do. You guys don't talk about the flyers. We start shows off with the flyers. Y'all come in half hour late talking about y'all don't say nothing about the flyers. Kill me, Smalls. Watch it, Steve. You might get in the box. Now, <laughs> to everything you said is right. LaFleur is who I trust more as a head coach, but now I got Vic out there. I, I got no nonsense, Vic. I got um, I got Kellen Moore on the offense. The offense is just so yeah. loaded that I feel like the change and the the way the offense feels, the way Jalen feels. Yeah, I think Jalen Hurts is a great quarterback. I know one thing: when Jalen Hurts had his shot to get to a Super Bowl, and it was a legit shot with a legit team, and they were rolling, he took him there. Mm-hmm. And then when he went there, he did his job. Yeah, he had a turnover. So what? He outplayed Patrick Mahomes, and I'll say it every single time somebody brings up the stupid Super Bowl, but. <laughs> He, he lost, but he got there. So in the bigger moments under pressure, we were 10-1 and one last year, winning by the skin of our teeth. That was with an injured Jalen Hurts. Yeah. He he was the one helping us get those victories because the defense wasn't showing up half the time. So it, it was on offense. So I, I believe Jalen Hurts is a good to great quarterback. Yeah. And Jason, Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback, right? Uh, yes, he is. Okay. I'm just, I, I, I just, I just, I just need to confirm because I've been told everybody keeps telling me Herbert is is chosen one. No, stop that. And uh, you know, uh, it, it's just infuriating because we got, we also do it to ourselves here in Philadelphia. We can't even get to talk about the damn game because we still worry about if Jalen is Jalen or. <laughs> I know, bro. You ask one question, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> we actually care about the team, right? Uh. So it's really hard when we're actually doing the things, but I'm like. Jalen Hurts has to prove himself every hour. Yeah. And I feel like Herbert's out here getting his $20 million, ain't never did nothing in the playoffs but throw five interceptions. The, the prince was promised ain't did nothing but throw five interceptions. Like, these dudes haven't done anything. And people are saying, well, you got to give them one to tell. Shut up. Like, yeah. I, I want to just say that J- uh, Jalen Hurts is top five. Jalen Hurts is elite. And I, I keep him top five because he's one of the only people that went to a Super Bowl in the Mahomes era. Just like I get Burrow. Burrow beat him. I'm putting Burrow over Allen, over Lamar, all that stuff. So right now, you're right. It is on Jalen Hurts, and it would be on Jalen Hurts. But my God, he ain't alone. Nope. So the offense itself, uh, Kellen Moore, you, ain't, you can't get no head coaching job. If you can't come out here with this lineup, and produce me 34 points. Yeah. And when I say 34-17, Harry, I'm thinking ball control. Right yeah, I know. Yeah, that's fair. Throw. Yep. You're not getting the rock, homie. Yeah. Like that's that's how Eagles football. That's what that's, we need. Yeah. That that's what that's what um, what's his name? The guy Carson Wentz did. Yeah. <laughs> and his run year, it was 33 to nothing and yeah. half. Yeah. And they just walked the dog every second half. Yeah. So that's what I'm expecting out of, out of Kellen Moore right okay. now. If Kellen's not doing that for us, then you ain't getting no head coaching job nowhere else because nobody's going to hire you. Bro, you couldn't win with that? We can't afford that. No. I if can't pay Ke- for that. If, like, Kellen's, if Kellen's not doing that, I think it could be the reverse of that. I could be they, We could lose 34-17 because the defense, like right now, I trust Vic, but I don't know about the personnel yet. I don't know about the personnel. I don't know if we can rush the passer well enough to affect Jordan Love. They have a good pass protection in Green Bay. So – there's stuff Jason, that I'm worried about. Jason, tell me why the defense is going to kill Yeah, him. please. <laughs> uh, it, it might not. <laughs> yeah. Jason, I rely on you yeah, for support, I, Jason. I, I agree. Until they can prove they can rush the passer, a team with a high-powered passing attack is just scary as could be. So, uh, again, we're going to get into the game, but let me just finish with this for these guys. I can't trust <laughs> Let me tell you, the audience, 
why the Philadelphia Eagles defense is going to be top notch and bar none. Okay, we got that dog Charlie Gardner Johnson out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was expecting a few turnovers. All right, we got mid play slay. He's not getting no interceptions <laughs> no more, but he ain't let nobody beat him deep. And if they do, it's not his man. He'll let yeah, you know right on yeah. that. <laughs> Quinion Mitchell is the only player on defense that is getting praise from Vic Fangio every single day, every yeah. single week. He's out there showing and proving how he did something with his hour seasoning. Now, Autumn drew the dog. Some of them got contracts coming up. Carter is elite, and he's a beast. Yeah. And all I need him to do is when the Eagles go down there and score, I need them to accidentally tip a ball and get an interception, <laughs> get a turnover. Then I need the Eagles to go score again. And then I need those 92 DBs to sit back in the cut yeah. and wait for Jordan Love to try and throw the ball. Because, again, they got a good rushing uh, attack. But they're, Josh Jacobs. They're Josh young. Jacobs, yeah. They're young. Uh, their offensive line is young. Really young. So that youth versus our youth. Uh, I, you know, let Huff run a little bit. If we get up by 10, yeah. I saw it in the playoff game last year. When they're when they're up, oh, it's all world because they can do anything they want to do. They play action, they run, they got a lot of young wide receivers. It's fine. Yeah. But when you're close or they're down, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And the one thing about pressure, which is so funny, because when Jalen Hurts, you pressure him up, you pressure any quarterback in this league, Correct. they got problems. Okay. So with their offensive line, and if you can get pressure on love early, which Micah Parsons couldn't do a whole fucking game to save his life. <laughs> and why he thinks he's the one. He hasn't done anything to person no. ever in his career. So that's how the uh, defense goes out there and does something. The offense puts up enough points to where the defense just gets to sit back, nicknack patty whack, get a dog bone. Then that's how we get home. That's what I'm expecting to happen. Um, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> look way better than they actually are. Because that's what, again, the Super Bowl year, the defense wasn't as great as we remember them to be the because they had they got to play with the lead. And then yeah. you get to back there and get all these turnovers. And then by the time the postseason came, everybody had confidence. Dudes that haven't done shit since and will never do anything again <laughs> were in those playoffs ball hawking yeah. interstate. Then running back, I mean, Minnesota didn't stand a chance on their opening drive. Just scared to death with the run back. So that's how we do it, gentlemen, on defense. And I'm okay. probably lying, but it feels like <laughs> what, I'm telling my is what I'm telling y'all when y'all ain't got no answers. When I ask y'all to back me up, and you got to lie sometimes. Like I said, I had a defense lie to itself. That's how I'm lying to y'all, and that's how the defense is going to come through. Okay, okay. Um, so – 3417. Uh Harry, <laughs> you said what just what number did you 3424? 3424. Jason. 3431. 3431. Now 3431 is more reasonable, right? 3431 is reasonable. Uh Green Bay. I, what? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I appreciate your honesty and your candor. So tell tell me why you think the Eagles could lose this game. Well, the biggest reason which team is complaining about going to Brazil the most every day, talking about how scared they are to be oh able to my God. play football on Friday. Who wants to listen to any Green Bay Packers talk about anything? That's who's fair. Who's not though? One team is scared uh, to be there. One team's ready to go. Who's got the better coach? A better Packers. coach. <laughs> <laughs> Will you? Yeah. Why? I got Stoutley University. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's our that's that's our <laughs> X factor. I got uh-huh. Stanford University and I got Fit Grandio. Yeah, both teams have new D coordinators. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. That's, that's what I'm saying. Up, right. So that's why. That's why. That's why I put the, the Stoutland yeah. you in there. Okay. Green Bay's mm-hmm. running the same offense they ran last year. The Eagles are running one they've never run before. That's a plus for Green Bay. Unfortunately, it, it is not a new offense. It is an adjusted Nick Sirianni <laughs> offense. <laughs> 95% new. Yeah. Huh? The quotes. Jalen huh? said it's 95% new in that one quote. Wait, say that one time. Jalen said it's 95% new, the offense. Could you, Which everyone else could said you hear that's him, not Harry? true. No, yeah, I'm <laughs> oh, that was, that was oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. The, the people couldn't hear. Coach was mad about that, though. Yeah. So <laughs> you got you got the Packers win. I do. 34 31. No I mean, <laughs> that makes more sense than what we both said. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I am, but I really probably should have said 34 31 birds, but I don't know, man. So, again, it's something I for this game I can't even be mad at because, again, the way that it feels, yeah, coming off of last year, you automatically are, or not you, everyone is a little bit more reserved, yeah. Um, I think that. 
the defense of the Eagles is young. The entire base of the the Green Bay Packers are young, right? So to what you said, the Packers aren't talking about being scared about going down there. So, yeah, that means they might be down there stripping and dipping. They might meet Flozita out there on the beach, you know what I mean? I hope, I hope. Jair Alexander, I hope he's out there. <laughs> they might stay out later one night and, you know what I mean, have a couple of drinks with Consuela. You know what I mean? I don't know. They're young guys out there in Rio who aren't scared. I feel like that's what the Eagles were doing with, with the team. They were scaring them so they didn't go out and party and have fun. Yeah. And if Green Bay is not doing that, which Jason's right, I, I did look through social media. I did look through Packers social media. I, I looked at, like, um, Jacobs, I looked at a lot of the key players, and none of them are speaking in the sense that a lot of the Eagles players are, which at the same time, like, man, I wish they did a better job of that. Jalen came out today. Brazil, beautiful place, beautiful people, a lot of culture. They seem to have a large fan base there. They love sports. I'm excited. Once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Again, there's a reason the dude graduated with a communications degree, mm-hmm. and I know a lot of people don't like it, but, my God, that's what you want. I don't want hearing A.J. Brown, oh, I can't, they told me I can't even wear, use my phone out there in the streets. <laughs> I'm like, you're out here you're almost getting hit by a car, Autism Speaks in Philadelphia, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, shit goes down, strays, or, bullets are flying out here in Philadelphia on a regular basis, okay? You know, uh, God bless the children, but kids get popped on these streets accidentally out here. Like, it, it is not a game. That's not a joke. And I know most of the players don't live in the city, but you still come through here to work. You, you still out here getting your little cheese steaks, you know what I mean, for your photo ops and all your little meetings and stuff like that you got going on. So the fear of Brazil, Jason, you're right, that the Eagles are talking about that more than the Packers. But I'm taking that as a good thing. I just showed the Eagles fast five. Like, this is what happens in Brazil. Bad things can happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like AJ only commented on it because he would be the one to go out and party, honestly. I don't know if that's true, to be honest, but it just he seems like the one that just likes to have, have fun. I don't even mean that in a bad way. He just likes to have yeah. fun. Um, um, so, well, I, all I know is I have no fear about it. Cause like you just said, uh, Vin Diesel, I think he's going to be down there for the game. Yeah, Brazil. This is Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're going to be hyped. I'm ready to go. Um, are you worried about the Packers running game versus the Eagles defense? Jason, is that, is that the, one of the bigger things you're worried about? Well, they did add Josh Jacobs. So we'll see how he fits into that. He's a slight upgrade over Aaron Jones, I believe, just because he's younger and he seems to be a better runner. I don't know if he's the pass catcher Aaron Jones was, but I'm definitely worried about that. I'm worried about the receivers versus our secondary. Really? Yeah, they have four receivers. They don't, their receivers are so good that they don't really have a true number one because they have four guys that could all start. The Eagles have Slay, who was questionable last year. Mitchell looks like he's going to be good, but his first game, so we'll see, even though I expect a lot out of him. And then who knows after that, right? What are you talking about? I got 92 backs. But can they play? I got yeah. Rob. Uh-huh. I got uh, uh, Quenyon. I, I believe got, in Mitchell a lot. I do. So I do also. I, I got Blankenship. I got Maddox. I got. I wish Maddox. we had our boy DeJon, man. I really do. I wish I, I, I really, yeah. Right? C- Cooper DeJean. Not I right. wish. Is definitely a save. <laughs> yeah, I know, but he'd be out. He'd be Ed Reed. Yep. <laughs> I'm saying. He oh, could be. Be. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> a little Paul Malu, maybe. Make him plays. That's what I'm thinking. Two months ago, I'm sitting there battling with Harry. You got him out there. Nah, yeah. Ed, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah, nah, Charles I'm Woodson. Charles not, Woodson. Just Cooper, a little hybrid. Not a corner. <laughs> just a save. They try to draft number one. Anyway. Um, yeah. I, I'm questioning on blanket ship, too, by the way. Yeah. Don't you don't like white all. chocolate? No, I do not. Oh, come <laughs> I on, think he's baby. a backup safety force to play a lot. I I think <laughs> I think he is a one shining moment three times a game kind of guy. And that's all you need from a safety. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially when you got CJ DJ out there. And uh I think as a unit, the secondary is going to shock people. I, I hope so. I, I am so I also think that. I, I'm not overrating the Packers um, offense. Their, their wide receivers like, are mid. I, what you said is correct. They look better than they do because they ran the ball well. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the biggest thing. Like Jordan Davis has got to show up because what they were doing was running the ball against the Cowboys and they're getting six and seven yards a clip. And then when you come down and drop in that box, he was picking them apart over the top because you got play action. So 
if you can somewhat stymie the run a, even a little bit, those wide receivers aren't getting away from anybody manned up. It was the run game that was allowing them to just break free and do what they were doing. And again, it's the Cowboys, but the Cowboys secondary was dinged up too, but they were holding on but until the, the dam just broke. I feel like we're healthy. It's the first game of the season. Jordan Love is young. He just got a whole bunch of money, and I don't trust him. <laughs> I don't trust him. Oh, man. I'm high on Jordan Love, as I say, like every week we talk. Every week he's a possible topic. I'm just like, man, bro. I mean, yeah, back to back, we got what, Favre and Rodgers, and then Love looks just like both of them. It's That's not a coincidence to me. I mean, they they have a QB sort of I don't, you know, carousel over there that works well for them. <laughs> oh, QB factory? Okay. Yeah. QB factory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and also, I thought you were going to ask uh, Jason if he's if he's worried about their run game versus our run game because that's kind of what I'm worried about. Like because, like you saying, Jordan Davis needs to show up. He needs to stop the run. But the way you talk about winning this game, which I agree, is we go up, go up big, or you know, enough to start running the ball, and we just shut them out that way. But that's like what polished offenses do and polished teams do. I don't know if we're polished yet, and that's what I'm worried about. I don't even know if our line is ready to kind of set the tone without Jason Kelsey like you talked about. So I believe in the in the tools we have, but I just want to see it before I really trust it. Like you said, the end of the last year was bad. It was rough. So I don't know. And Jordan Love's good, man. I think he's going to be really good. Ah! <laughs> Back to that, just real quick. Jordan Love is nobody. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. Jordan Love may one day in the future, in the far, 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 far future, win one Super Bowl. And if that's the greatness of the the Green Bay Packers legacy is that they have three of the potential greatest quarterbacks ever in life and they only get one Super Bowl each. I'll take that though. I wish they were I wish they were Eagles. <laughs> that's what I would say. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'll um, take three Super Bowls. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Right. Well, oh my God, that's nothing. In it my is. lifetime? In my lifetime. <laughs> it is nothing. Because mm-hmm. McNabb should have a Super Bowl. We got cheated. Yeah, that's true. Fair. And then Jalen Hurts got cheated, too. So we would have three, too. Yeah, we got yeah. cheated. Three right. We got cheated. <laughs> no, I will say this. The only reason we got that one is because it was Nick Foles out there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're not noticing what I'm putting down, there's a reason why the Eagles keep getting shafted on their quarterbacks go up. <laughs> Conspiracy. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't tell me about Patrick Mahomes. He's half and half. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> He's out there doing what he needs to do. Jordan know? loves mix too, right? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, again. Uh, Are you saying they're left handed? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, we're, we're, man, this is so bad. We need this game to happen now. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yes, we do. We're, no, it's not just you, though. Like I said, too much. We're so far in the weeds. That we came and really yeah. talk sports and the game. Do you know what has me rattled the most right now about all the games? What's what? that? All these national guys keep picking who's going to the playoffs and whether it's, you know, farming for clicks or whatever, but they keep having the Eagles not in the playoffs. And every time I'm like, that's ridiculous, right? But then, like, I thought the same thing when they were talking about the Philly schedule being so easy. And I was like, oh my God, they're just haters. And then the Phillies got to the next part of their schedule and they were right. So it's like, sometimes the experts are right. And why do they keep having the Eagles missing the playoffs? I don't see it. And that's what scares me the most because I can't figure out how or why. I, th- I think the biggest reason is, again, the way the season ended yeah. and our head coach. Yes, definitely. <laughs> if you, everybody in America, and this is every single person in America, thought Nick should have been fired. Now, the team's doing a really good job of rallying around uh, uh, Nick Chiriani, and they're saying all the right things. Chiriani. But in that moment, yeah, pom-poms out. Uh, Clapper 2.0, all the names I call them. In that moment, even Jeffrey Lurie waited nine days and floated around on his billion-dollar yacht that he just bought before officially bringing him back in. So even the owner wanted to fire this man. He had no answers. Ever since the 49ers game, and I've said this before, we talked about this, this is really what the crux of the issue is. Every week, you're out there talking shit, rah, rah, put your hands up. You know, Jalen's got to calm you down on the sidelines. You're yelling at fans. You like that in the tunnel. You're saying all this stuff, uh, Kirk Cousins coach, and you're saying all this wild, (laughs) wild stuff. You go in and get your teeth kicked in by the 49ers. You walk into the locker room and say, all right, guys, talk about it, and you leave. Every game you give a speech, win or lose. Yep. You go and lose the 49ers, you let the team talk about it. Now it's you're chasing sacks. 
you ain't shit against the blitz. Why didn't you call my mom back last week? I told her she told you your best friend. Like all kinds of random stuff just started popping up where everybody's hating. And then it's I ain't listening to coach. Oh, I'm not listening to my coaches. I'm calling the plays now. Well, why don't you just say you're calling the plays, Nick? Nah, because I'm gonna put that on the young dude. And I'm I'm sick behind the scenes. Like there was so much going on, and you didn't have a leader to say it's on me. Now, Nick did that and he said it's on me, but he did it in the most vain bullshit possible way <laughs> with no answers or explanations. So anyone looking at the Philadelphia Eagles feels like how we feel right now. I don't know what's going on over there. Who's in charge? Who's in control? Who's making decisions? And and we all know that it's Howie and Lori by extension because having Nick there, we all thought he was a puppet. We think that their last three coaches are puppets. So that's the problem. That's why you guys feel the way you do. That's why the pundits feel the way they do. Because when they look at Nick Sirianni and he's talking about Friday night lights for 10 minutes, <laughs> and you're like, come on, bro. You got one job to be the CEO. Now, Jason, you you said like, well, um, Pittsburgh CEO coach. Like you, you named up a whole bunch of CEO coaches, right? Yes. But they were all – all those guys you name are – except for – Harbaugh down in Baltimore, who was a special teams coach. But even then, at least he was a special teams coach. Mm -hmm. Nick was a wide receivers coach getting elevated to head coach of one of the premier franchises in the NFL for his first job. And yes, he had a good run with great coordinators and a nice schedule. Schedule was hard last year. That's the reason I think we're going to be okay this year because the schedule is a lot easier. But Nick doesn't have the gravitas or the answers to give anybody any confidence. Even if he said nothing, that's how Bill Belichick got through it after being a loser coach. Yep. His whole thing was, you know what? I'm not talking anymore. I'm going to go mystique route. And it worked. And it yeah, worked. It worked very well. He went from being a loser coach, the Browns and the Jets and laughing stock and all that kind of stuff. Hey, great defensive coordinator. This guy's never going to be a head coach. He's never going to be. He went to on the Cincinnati. I don't know. That's a dumb question. Next question. Patriot way. Like, sometimes you got to find a new lane, and Nick hasn't found a new lane. He's still flowers growing and trees potting and hanging in and doing this and hanging with Mr. Cooper type shit. So that's why everybody feels that way, and that's why everybody's going to be wrong. Oh, man. One back-to-back in the last 10, 20 years. It's not going to change. The Cowboys have a quarterback that's not paid. They have a head coach that's not under contract. They have defensive players that didn't get their money. I mean, they let go of like five pro bowlers and all all, all, uh, all star players. Like they're, they're going to have their own problems to deal with. So I, I know what you're saying, but I feel like that's why I feel like it's because Nick doesn't have an answer when people ask him basic questions and the answers he does give freak people out. I know. <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Yeah. That's, that's it's crazy. Just like, nice guy, but like, is are the lights on? Yeah, you're like, I don't know, like, man. <laughs> like, is somebody taking this kid to the bus? Because I don't know if he's gonna make it on his own. <laughs> <laughs> the lights, the lights are on, or they're flickering, or they're blinding. That's what I think. Because like you talk about, you brought up Harbaugh, man. I can't, I can't get out of my head Harbaugh right now. Because I'm just like, he is the opposite, but the same type of you know CEO, coach, whatever, saying some soliloquies. But he just was like, I could listen to him talk all day, uh, Jim Harbaugh. You know, what I'm I mean, John, excuse me, John Harbaugh. So it's one of those things where I'm just like. Tom went in Harbaugh. If they're CEOs, Nick is just – he stumbled into the front office. That's what happened. And, and not only are they CEOs and not only are they especially, but, like, one was a defensive specialist. Yeah. And and the other one was a special team specialist. So at least at one of the top three parts of football, they were a specialist. Yeah. So they they worked in the head coaching office with the, with the head coach, and they worked with the coordinators because they needed to get the players that they needed for the parts that they needed. So they're more involved than just a wide receivers yeah. coach. Um, and so there, there's that part of it. And it's just not for nothing. I'll say it because it sounds horrible to say, but like I said, people are still watching the game. There's not a lot of people in there. There's something to the fact of just a man's man having a conversation with you when they talk. That's why when they say stuff like how he's not a football guy or Jeffrey Lloyd's not a football guy, I kind of feel like it's a little disrespectful. I like poking at, at, at Howie a lot, but Jeffrey Lloyd has owned the Philadelphia Eagles for 30 years. He's put millions of dollars behind it. He lives it. He breathes it. He wakes up every day with it. He goes to sleep with it on his mind. And so if if he's not a football guy by now, when who is? Who is? <laughs> like, there's guys out here that have never played football down in their life. 
but they run four fantasy leagues and they watch every game and they're football guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but Jeffrey Laurie's not, so I can't. But it feels like Nick's like he's just that little brother that's happy to be here and he's annoying as fuck. And you're like, yep. give him the PlayStation that's not plugged, the controller that's not plugged in. He says, sure, you can play with us, Nikki. Come on. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, yeah, you got him. Good job. That's how it feels. No, it's true. I mean, at least I don't know if you guys know who Tito Ortiz, former UFC like light heavyweight champion, but he's got a whole montage out there of him just trying to say like clever shit and like and just saying the opposite of what he should be saying. And Dana White like always comments on posts of that stuff, just being like, "I love you, Tito," because he actually hates Tito and he just thinks it's hilarious. But it's one of those things. That's what Nick is. He's like always trying to grasp for the the beautifully eloquent, you know, whatever strategic genius thing, and it's just like always nonsense. So God, I don't know how this ended up. <laughs> I mean, he's. Talking about, just talking about the birds, like you said, there's too much time between now and that game because I can't think of like anything it's else. Only two days. It's only I know. I know. I know. I, I, again, I we're gonna win this game. Yeah. And, <laughs> wrong. Good. I'm always wrong. And yeah, because he's always wrong. Jason doesn't know anything. I mean, I he's my next Sirianni for the show. I just keep him around because he says. <laughs> my mic plugged in. I don't. I don't think so. I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to mute this thing all night, but um. It, there, I can't even like I said, I can't normally I'd be like, oh, especially game one. Like, I remember a couple years ago, Johnny Marks when the Eagles were playing the Lions, and he was just like, oh, the line and the Lions had been turning around, they, they were getting better year after yeah. year. He's like, oh, the Lions are gonna come in here and blow. I'm like, you scared of the Lions, bro? Like, it's the Lions, and I bet him put a bag on his head, and, and you know, people were just like mad. But at the same time, it was like you don't know what the Eagles were. That game was tough though with the Lions. And that game was tough. And they, like, and they, and like, and they just skated by. Yeah. And I feel like that's what might happen on Friday. I, I just think there's gonna be I think that their team is a lot younger than ours, and that kind of travel means something to youth. Yeah. And I'm gonna put that on you keep saying that love is a good quarterback. I, I'm being facetious. I, I think he's yeah. a good quarterback too. I, I do believe that he's gonna be a good quarterback. But I believe that my quarterback is one of the most mature quarterbacks in the NFL. I believe that my quarterback is one of the most prepared quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, you know, I hate Tom Brady, but that is the one thing that everybody compares him to Tom Brady with because there is something to the fact of, again, how you answer questions. Like I just ripped Nick for 10 minutes. Mm. Jalen answers questions like a guy that was born with a football in his hands. I don't know how his mom got it in there, but he was born with that football in his hands. And that's all he thinks about. That's all he talks about. Now, he's got other interests. He's got other things. But when he is asked a question about ball, he could talk all day. Yeah. You watch his tape uh, when, they're, when they're throwing plays at him, coming out of college and interviews, he's regurgitating every play like Peyton Manning. Like, he got it down. You know what I mean? Flipping the board back and forth, reversing plays. Like, he lives and breathes football. And he's been through so much. I, I feel like that gives us a leg up, along with all the weapons, going into another country, 10-hour flight, um, fear or no fear of the area. Uh, you know, nobody lives in Green Bay. They're not All these players aren't from there. They obviously come from all over the country, and they come around there. But, like, there is a different mindset. Uh, when you get down to a city like that and you travel versus being from Philadelphia in Philadelphia area. I, I think that that has something to do with it. Um, it's not going to be a home game, but I think it's a disadvantage more for the, for the Packers than it is for the Eagles. And our disadvantage is the defense. So let me ask you guys a question. So I'm thinking we're talking about kind of two different scenarios of this game, right? Like we we're showing what we can do or it's kind of like we're not there yet. Right. But that's one of those things where I'm like, does this game, however it ends up represent how the season goes, which, cause I'm kind of thinking about like this, like if we come out ready and we win the game or at least we play like we're talking about, I think that could be really promising for the rest of the season. But if we look like we're not kind of, you know, I guess just ready to start the season. I don't know. I know that without without preseason games being how they used to and the prep that guys used to get, it's a little bit different now. But I don't know. That's what I'm a little bit worried about. Like, because if Nick is not doesn't have the whole thing kind of at least gelling, like these guys know what to do. These guys know what to do. Do your job, and that's what I have to worry about. Because that's that's all Nick has to do, right? Get these guys in those positions. If he doesn't have them there yet, I don't think he's going to get everybody there. So <laughs> I just Nick got kind of Nick doesn't have about to, it. Nick doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> no, but I mean, if yeah. it plays out like what Jason said. If it plays out 34 31, everybody's like, oh, coin toss, field goal miss, or something. Anything could have happened. Ah, oh, they got us. It's all good. We put up 34 points. If we go out there and 
we get smoked 44 to 16, 44 17. The gates will be on fire when they fly back yeah. in Philadelphia. Yeah. So it, de- it always depends on how you lose. The same thing with how you win. Ah, right. uh, at least you got that George W. You win by two, you win by whatever. But they can't, they can lose the way Jason's talking about, and people are okay. But they can't, they can't go down big. They can't be down big at any point in this game. That's what I'm saying, man. If we lose like 34, if we look, like I said, if we lose 34 17, the reverse of what I said, the reverse of what you said, you know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Like that sort of situation where they hold the ball. Josh Jacobs runs the ball. Like they're, you know what I mean? Cause they have the tools to do that too. So shut up. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't got uh, AD Brown. That's true. They ain't got Smitty. That's true. They got an all right tight end. Yeah. They got kind of a Goddard. <laughs> they ain't got no Saquon Barkley. Jones is good too. But you know, Jacobs is, nice. Jacobs is good too. But you know what I'm saying? And they ain't got Jones. They ain't got Lane Johnson. They ain't got my Lotta. Nope. I expect the Eagles defense to get better as the season goes on, by the way, to answer your question. I think as yeah. they play in that scheme more, they're going to improve. Uh, the Dolphins players who hated Fangio for whatever reason. <laughs> That defense started to come on in the second half last year until yeah. they lost both of their edge rushers to injury, which that has nothing, you know, you can't predict that right. stuff. So I expect them, even if they were to lose week one, like I said, I think the Eagles are still going to be on track to finish strong during the season. And th- and that's an easy fix of why they hated Fangio, because Fangio was coaching a middle-aged roster. Right. They weren't a lot of there weren't a lot of rookies, there weren't a lot of super vets. They were all middle of the road guys who have played under coaches that are like, yo, it's Miami. <laughs> do what you do. <laughs> Vic's probably like, yo, you need to drink more water, bro. You know, <laughs> like, you're playing like shit. I don't like the way you covered that guy. You got a problem? Oh, okay, well, then sit down. Run a lap. Like, And they're down there in Miami. The heat's hot. They're like, look, dude, I'm a millionaire. I, I already got I'm already on my second contract. I don't need to listen to you. Right. Get back up here to Philly. A lot of young guys, hey, I've seen you have guys go all pro. I've seen you make guys, you know, all, 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 um, Pro Bowl guys. Like, I've seen guys come up under you to talk about you. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. teaching. They're young. They don't have the cachet yet. Right. There's a lot of young guys. And, and he treats the vets in a certain way where, like, he almost doesn't even talk about them. And when he does, he's just as hard on them as he is the young guys, which the young guys can respect because it's usually them the one getting kicked in the back. Right. So, you know, he's sitting there like, yo, Bradbury ain't shit, never was shit, never be shit. He lucky to be here. Everybody's like, hey, okay, okay. Because Quentin got like, yo, he loved me, bro. I'm good. I'm good. So I think that's what, uh, what Vic is. He he is the 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 old guy in the room that's not playing no games. And if you're soft, like a lot of Miami players are, which is one of their problems in general, why they can't win in December because they're soft, that's why he rubbed them the wrong way. I haven't heard anybody – uh, grumbling even about Vic and the way he talks. He's abrasive. Crazy so if, old Uncle Vic. That's he's like, yo, Vic's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Crazy over yeah. there. But, <laughs> but he knows what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Like, like I said, he's very much like he's giving you nuggets of like, wow, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm 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 so upset about the defense. Uh, you know, we have questions. Nolan Smith, uh, yeah. is White going to be returned to the old White? Was he just like – did his baby mama cheat on him last year? Like stuff could happen in your personal yeah. life where he's just off for a year. Hoping he gets back to form. He's talking the right talk, but you know, Davis has to show up. Carter's going to be a beast. We yeah. all believe in him. That's a fact. Uh, mid, like I said, mid play slay. Just keep being mid play, bro. You're older right. than two. I don't need big play slay. Right. What happened to Sweat last year? Like that guy was a ten sack guy, and then he was nothing. He couldn't do anything last year. Uh, and that's part of the thing about, uh, like I said, Nick not giving answers. I feel like Sweat. Had a problem with Reddick. Right. Mm. And that kind of thing can rub you the wrong way. And then he's got Pencil Boy in his ear telling him to do dumb stuff. So, it, oh, it's, real quick on that. Yeah. Just so we know, Fangio drops his defensive ends in coverage just like they did last year, just so everybody knows ahead of time. That's going to happen. Oh, yeah. He does it like 8 to 12% of his plays. So, like, it's going to be a thing that happens. You're going to see Sweat drop back. You're going to see Huff drop back. Like, you're going to see Jalex Hunt drop back. You're going to see those guys in coverage at times. That's just part of Fangio's defensive style. So, his own blitzes. So yeah. I don't have a problem with that as long as it's not the guy that's getting 20 to 30 sacks a game. It's anybody. That's oh, it's I, anybody. I that's know. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm I'm you it's going to happen. I'm just telling uh, you. Well, right now, I'm not going to be upset about it because we don't have one of those guys right now. Right. Yeah. But when fair. I see a guy who's getting 
one or two sacks a game, dropping back into coverage, I lose my mind because that's not what he's there for. That's not what he's built for. Uh, and so, shut up. I think all teams do that, though. You got a surprise team. Surprise with what? Like TJ Watt drops in the coverage. Parsons drops in coverage. Those guys drop in coverage from time to time. You just have to. It's how you fool quarterbacks. This is why you don't have any friends. <laughs> I don't have friends because I'm annoying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> You see, you don't even know why you know that you know that you are that you are. Yeah, what I you know? <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't want to hear rational stuff. Uh, I don't like the way it feels. Fine. But this year, I won't care because Smith ain't did nothing. So maybe you drop back and get a tip ball or something. You know what I mean? Right. Huff is super fast. Maybe you drop back and get a tip ball or something. Like I said, you you aren't. They aren't guaranteeing me one to two sacks a game. Right. That's the difference. I, I am fucking with you, obviously, but that's a complete obvious difference. Like Hassan Reddick. If he's dropping back and he ain't got me a sack yet in the game, bro, what is he doing? Like, right. no, I'm yeah. I'm not into one of his snaps because that might have been the snap that he broke through and got the sack on. Like, don't do it. Everybody else, shoot, you drop me back there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't care. Extra man on the field. Bro, bro, throw the flag. I don't care. Just don't but, drop Jalen Carter, bro. No. Right? Like, no, oh, my God. <laughs> shoot. I mean, I mean, he might be the best. He might be the best I mean, DB in the league, though. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> That's Jalen Carter. Are you talking about? Look, I mean, he he's got like. He's got one or two more seasons. Where I might start giving him Will Chamberlain treatment. You know Bro, I mean? I've I've had, I'm like, yo, Carter was out here. He picked up nine people. I, I, only <laughs> nine people was Reggie White. You see what I'm saying? Like he, I, I've he, had flashes of the memory of him diving, trying to get that like spike interception, like going through my head this whole entire Bro. episode, just because I'm like, dude, he's gonna do that. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna complete that play at one point in his career. As a person who hasn't fallen in six years and previous to that, twelve years. It is so hard for a big man to be so athletic that you can just dive yeah. <laughs> into the line like that, like quickly and land softly. Like that ball was close. It was close. Yeah, he was right there. And I'm he really there, was. Like, this is a whale of a man. This if he had like, practiced that play, like if he had reps at doing that, he would have caught that. Like if he had a bunch of reps just from his life doing that, he would guarantee he would have caught that. So um, I'm so confused if that ever happened. Like, I, what what would you that? even do, bro? Like, what, like, the other team's quarterback, you're like, what? And he what? said he saw like a, a high school kid try it, and then people were like yeah. online trying to find it, and they couldn't find it. Like, I know I, I've seen it, someone try it before too, but like, I don't know where well, I saw that. I don't know where he saw. He's like, he probably saw some Instagram clip four years ago, and that just like snuck in his mind in that moment. Like, that is just so sick. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Let's talk about the Phils for a little bit out here. We'll come back and end on the Eagles. But uh, the Phils are playing the, the Blue Jays. And climbing it, back. Climbing back. Seven to eight. This game has been offense city. I, I fully understand nobody's in here watching us. But for the people that are, are in here, we appreciate you. We thank you. But I would be focused fully on this game if I didn't have this show to do because this game is out of control. Uh, Marsh is at the plate. Uh, batters on second and third, top of the eighth, and uh, it just looks like an impressive game. I will <laughs> rewatch. I was watching my daughter. We were so upset in the first inning because it was six to one. And we're like, "Yo, what is going on?" Like, you know, we thought the team was back. Um, win or lose the side, Jason. Are, are the Phillies back? Phillies are going to be fun to watch and annoying to watch in the playoffs because they're back ish. <laughs> <laughs> what's your What's your biggest worry right now with the Phillies? Strikeouts. They just strike out too much when it matters. They don't put the ball in play enough. I, you throw them curveballs and they're going to chase. They just can't lay off that stuff. And it, it's infuriating to watch at times. Just got out of the inning, by the way. 7 yeah. 8, left 2 on base. Yeah, it's, it's just super frustrating. Yeah. Um, Harry, are they back? I think they're back. I think they're back. I'm going to say I'm no, no back ish for me, but I know what Jason's talking about. I just think it's one of those things where, like he said, the, the approach, if we're not hitting, the approach is going to be a problem in the playoffs. So hopefully we're just hitting. <laughs> hopefully we're raking, and that's that's what we do. Yeah. Oh, Bryce's health is the thing that worries me the most. Yeah, Bryce has that's, been playing well, too. That's so the right. that's, that's the answer I wanted. Yes. That's, that's Sorry I'm about that. With. I missed that one. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was <laughs> the alley I was giving you. Yep. I, I feel like, so again, tonight, Schwarber had two home runs. I don't know if he had another or anything like that, because obviously we're doing a show. But um, Schwarber is... I'm not dinged up, but something seems off with him, but he, he's coming back. Um, the, the chase rate is out of control, um, but they're pitching it Casty now, and he's starting to get hot, and this is around the time when he starts to get hot. It's just, you know, it's almost like June Schwarber, like late mm-hmm. season Nick, uh, at least in the first round or two of the, of the postseason, he's re- he gets nuclear. Yeah. Um, 
He has a son in the building more, and he just he just goes off. And he's coming up clutch, down 0-2 with, at a couple of at-bats during that series and coming up with big hits. And normally, my goodness, all you do is hang your head when Nick's down 0-2 because of the chase rate, because he's not um, – I couldn't understand what the Braves were doing in that series, throwing him balls that were over the plate when he was down 0-2. I, I, it I was beyond me. Like, just like, have they ever watched him play before? I have no idea what was like, going on. <laughs> low and away. I'm, I'm, low and away, 0-2 to him. And it's, you're going to yeah, like have... Two, two feet off the plate, low and away. Yeah, too. You right. can do that a couple times before. <laughs> like, we're trying to go fastball up. Yeah, like, so... That's not it. So you're, you're, right, you're right about the chase rate. Um, they're, they're back because this is as back as they can be. Yeah, right? yeah, that's exactly right. There's, you know, losing to the Braves and then coming back home and beating Braves at home, three, four in the fashion they did. Coming back eleven innings, um, coming back from another game down, uh, a rival that you know that you end up seeing in the postseason, um, our, our, our Tuna Junior, or whatever his name is. Um, yeah, Liam season's coming. That's a good point, Liam season though, because that might be the vibe we need. I don't know. We don't. I don't. I haven't not been able to fr- like envision what the spark will be this Red October, but I feel like we need a spark. So maybe it's maybe it's Liam. Well, I keep it's, hoping we'll get June Schwarber, but because we didn't get that this year, that we'll get that four for five today. So hopefully that's the start. I don't know. Right. Well, it's Jason's fault. We don't have a vibe. <laughs> Pick a song, Jason. Geez, they need one. Yeah. Everything yeah. uh, I got one. <laughs> now I'm all on the freeway. Something, something. It's a long day. Whatever they say. They just need to fuck the 40 and not as bad. That's all they got. <laughs> wow, that's, wow, wow, that's everybody's. Wow. What do you think? I tried to get that guy. I reached out to him. Yeah, I was going to say, he need the, the Phil's need a song. Uh, dude, dude, I'm, 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 I'm a cause. I'm a cause. I'm glad. I think I might know. <laughs> I don't have um, that connection. Uh, but yeah, it, they they need a song. They need a vibe. You know what I mean? Because uh, it, it's it's so funny because uh, their locker room. I wanted the locker room shake up. I wanted some yeah. kind of change in the locker room. I I will say that as a person that I am, who is a non racial, fully racially motivated person, I feel like sometimes the vibes get too comfortable in any situation. I like I like discomfort sometimes. I like learning about new people. I I love when I was in Kentucky. I'm just talking to a dude that's never left a county. He's never left his county. Yeah, that's crazy. Twenty three years old. He hasn't gone anywhere outside of forty mile radius. Got the Walmart and I got the Crick. What I need to go somewhere for? God damn it, Billy. Uh, Bob. Good for him. Life is good. <laughs> like, yeah. I tell me about your life, Billy. Like, right. what is going on that you ain't got to see near nothing? Not a beach. Not a plane. Nothing, Billy. You ain't Nothing. going nowhere. He got a girlfriend. They probably married, but I should check on Billy. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I, I like the, yeah. I like the family. <laughs> I like I like the family and learning about people. So I get it. But at the same time, when somebody new comes in, you get to learn something new. Yeah. Hey, maybe don't chase that like this. You know what I mean? Like, this is how I do it. You know what I mean? Let me. Hey, why why are we why are we grumping? This is what y'all grump about? Like we ain't grumping right. about that. Like somebody can just shake it up for you and change the the mood of the team. And we didn't get that, so I ain't got my song. I mean, we need something because they seem to love that kind of crap. Yeah. So we need something. You know what I mean? I, I miss I miss Andrew McCutcheon right now. I miss Gene Segura right now too. But like McCutcheon comes to mind, I'm just like, damn, bro. Like Bryce is not the vocal leader that I wish he was, man. It's not. I can't force it, but I'm just saying like we need somebody. I know Schwarber's like I hear he's the vocal leader in the clubhouse, but I don't know, man. You need that combination of like fire in game and like. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I hope we get something. Jason, we need a chain. We need some. Oh, yeah. Did you see did you see the, the Blue Jays got a home run jacket? Or what about Damn. a home run cheese steak? Yeah, home run cheese steak? Home run cheese steak? Eat, eat you. Nah, it could be it could be not, you know, just like a I, I want to. Che- I, I do you know a cheesesteak chain. Yeah, oh, yeah I'm for Definitely it. do a cheesesteak oh. chain. Yo, Drew Let's make it Dro- <laughs> Mike for the okay. So <laughs> If I hit the lottery, I'm about to go and buy another lottery ticket. If I hit the lottery, okay. I guarantee you, I will buy a diamond encrusted cheesesteak chain with yellow diamonds for cheese whiz Oof. and some brown chocolate diamonds, and it will have a magnet in it. So the way you put the chain on is you break open the cheesesteak and you mm. see the diamond fill on the inside, <laughs> and then you close that jaw. Yo! Ooh, Yo! Ooh, tell ooh. me! Jewel or somewhere. Ooh. Even if you made that shit with fake diamonds. I'd say Nikki, Nikki Castellanos is going to be, he's going to be oh, oh, man. raking for that chain. 
put the chain, break the chain, put it on, oh, man. I need a cheesesteak chain to save my life. Oh, we need oh, that, or we need like a jerk off double celebration, like Joe Tani has with the Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that shit's crazy. Yo, not for nothing. The Dodgers are are, yeah. are shady brunch, bro. They be out there uh, booty bumping and rubbing <laughs> butt cheeks and 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 humping legs and stuff like dogs. They are a weird dugout, bro. I mean, no offense. Do what you do. That's I mean, just what happens when you have like five, like the f- 10 best players in baseball on your team. You're like, all right, fuck it. We just got to act weird now because we can do whatever we want. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They just don't care. They're just so stacked. <laughs> Keep me around mediocres if that's what happens around <laughs> <laughs> You don't you want 50 50 season? Come on now. Uh, we need a little yeah. jerk off, Sally. That's all. Yeah, somebody was talking about 50 50 season. Uh, my boy, uh, uh, Jason from uh, Fox 29. A battle of a 50 50. A who's starting pitcher with a 50 50. So I was like, when the last time he started pitching, bro? Everybody out here on Otani's mean he ain't pitched the ball all season. I know. Time. I want to, I sometimes want to hate on him, but I'm just like, bro. I'm hating on him. I he's know. Like, he's so boring. He, Even though he's so good, he's so boring. Not only is he boring, he cheats and he's a cheater <laughs> and he got his man locked up. Okay. What kind of dog <laughs> is that? You can't even ride for your boy. You threw your boy under the bus. It's weird. So yeah. I don't like it. I don't you know like how, it. Uh, Notre Dame with college football being back has played like a champion today. Say again. How Notre Dame has played like a champion today to sign when they leave the oh, locker room. Right, right. I just have no ditty every time. We <laughs> <laughs> That's their sign every the, time they the, leave. The, 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 the Dodgers sign is some ditty. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Of ditty. <laughs> a little bit. Of ditty. Free ditty. Free ditty. Actually, free ditty. Want to do a little ditty? Got to like they. They just yeah. do a little ditty. They a oh, full ditty. Um, <laughs> they dabble, Dibby dabble. <laughs> they dabble some Diddy. Dibby Dibby dabble. Dabble. Yeah, I, I think back as much as they're going to be. Uh, I think the top needs to use this next month to get Harper rest where he can yeah. and heal him up because I don't know what's wrong with him. But whenever they talk about injuries, everybody knows Harper's injured. Yeah. And um, he's trying to manage it. Topper's trying to say everybody's injured right now, you know, and it is late in the season. People are dinged up, but the way he's been deflecting over Harper, it, it feels like it's something. So they, they need to get that worked on. They need to get that worked out. At this um, point, I'd rather Harper rest enough and they be a wild card team than worry about keeping the first or second seed, to be honest. I mean, shoot, okay. the, Mets, the Mets might catch the Braves anyway. So like, not that I want that, but if Harper's healthy, I'm not worried about a wild card series with our pitching staff. I, I, I take that too. I, I would right. take that too. Because at this point, I'm not winning my bet that I put in for 98 wins, so I don't care anymore. You were so close. It looked like you were going to be good. Damn. So close. It and felt I, so good. It felt so good uh-huh. all season. That's like, crazy. And it's so crazy because when they first started sliding, my cousin hit me up like, yo, you shot that bet in. <laughs> I, you know what? I feel The cash out wasn't even worth it. Right? Yeah. The cash out was Because the, the problem was is that when they were up, so big, the cash out wasn't nothing because it was still so early in the season. Yeah, exactly. Crashing so bad, yeah. it was like not a cash out, it was nothing because they're doing terrible. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they like, I, I was probably asleep on a Tuesday at 3 <laughs> 15 a.m. when the cash out was looking lovely and I missed it. So, no, for sure. <laughs> it's like just ride or die with it and, um, you know, go from there. So, uh, we're, we're gonna go back to the Eagles while, while this game top, top of the ninth. Let's, let's see. If the if the Phillies are doing anything, I, you know I can always tell when the game's about to end because like 10, 20 people just jump in the room. Yeah, um, because we we've been doing shows with the game on. And um, by the way, I want to bet that uh, Quinion Mitchell gets an interception on Friday. Okay. Okay. Like, I think he's gonna be that good. This guy's out here picking. Up but is Jordan Love that? <laughs> uh, my worry is like, is Jordan Love oh. Aaron Rodgers not throwing any picks like that type of thing. <laughs> um. So. Real quick, we're gonna go back to the Eagles again, and then just watch how this Phillies plays out. Um, Jason, your your college team is Michigan. They are the cheaters. Mm-hmm. Um, how champions, they, you meant to say? How, oh. yeah. Is that what I said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cheat champions. Cheat, 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 cheat. Same thing. Um, how do you feel about their? How do you feel about your team? Oh, they're gonna have a bad season. They're gonna get blown out by Texas because they don't have a quarterback. No. How about their rival, Penn State? Penn State? They'll yeah. lose whenever it matters the most. Yeah. They always- <laughs> 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 Probably. <laughs> We're excited to beat West Virginia and their fans act so much. They never act as if they've done that stuff before. That's what always cracks me up about the fans from Penn State. They're like, yeah, you got beat West Virginia. You should have. Great job. Yeah, as, as everybody, well, not everybody, right. but people should know, I was anti-college, so I'm trying to get into college. So I'm trying yeah. to get a team, and I got people trying to get me onto this Penn State wagon because it's local. And I'm like, I don't 
I'm not yeah. about the Nittany's, but uh, you know I mean, they could get me. I mean, I can get. They, they might get me. I just try. I need to have somebody answer yeah. me why the whiteout game is the, set up the way it is. It confuses me. Yeah, because they wear blue. Yeah, if somebody <laughs> like, could tell me why they wear blue in the white outfit, like if somebody could uh-huh. actually legitimately explain that to me, because they're home. Uh, why? It's the accent. It's the accent. Like yeah, the uh, accent is white. Uh, it's weird. It, it's a weird thing because you, you walk you, in that bitch and that shit looks like a blizzard and you're freaking out. That's why they do it. I mean, because it's crazy. I wear their jerseys the wrong way, but yeah, it is. Yeah, weird. it's alright. Uh, Harry, wh- Harry, what's your costume? You got a costume? My team historically actually has been Bama, so it's uh, it's weird to say, but Mark he- Mark uh, Ingram winning the Heisman was a seminal moment for me as a as a fan growing up. So, but this year, I Seminals now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. They 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 blew it. They blew the it. Seminals don't like the Seminals. No. Game. So let me tell you something. Let me bring it back to the Eagles. What happened to the Seminals last year, Jason? They missed the playoffs, and everybody their quarterback got hurt. They missed the playoffs. Everybody thought they belonged there, and they didn't. And now they're proving everyone correct. <laughs> Does that feel like? Oh my! God. <laughs> no, because our quarterback didn't get hurt. We Not could, that, right. the quarterback was hurt half the year, but I'm just saying the team had expectations. The team was talking about what they deserved and what they could do. Mm. They were oblivious to their real problems and issues. Yeah, but there's one other issue that happened this year for Florida State. What is that? They transferred uh, DJ Alugalele from. Oregon State via Clemson, and he stinks. He's just awful. He's been awful everywhere he's gone. Well, so having a not a quarterback in college football is a death sentence. This is the third time you've trashed my great analogies. <laughs> like, I'm going off of feelings. I'm I have no friends. Give me these facts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask for facts. Damn, I asked me like. I'm like <laughs> I thought you don't, were going somewhere else with the don't, Florida State. Don't mess up honestly. a lie with a good time. What, where, where did you think I was going, Negro Domus? <laughs> I like how they screwed up hiring Norvell instead of Dion. Well, because I mean, like, I mean, either I mean, quarterback. I mean, at the very least, I mean that that's a that's a great comparison too. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, I tell you one thing, I saw one comment about um, the Buffaloes that was just diabolical. Deion Sanders refuses to put an offensive line in front of his son because he knows his son is so good. He wants to show off his son under pressure. And when you watch the game, it's a bold it, choice. It fe- <laughs> it's fe- a bold choice. It's a bold choice, Johnson. Very bold choice. But I, oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> no when way. You watch the game, and if you just watch the highlights, it feels like jailbreak every time. Oh, it is. oh and yeah. It, and it feels like <laughs> every single play. Again, it's the competition who you're playing, all that kind of stuff. They're not playing the toughest competition, and we all fully understand that. But again, just eyeball test of watching the game. Sanders looks like the most accurate quarterback I've ever seen in my life in college, with five people in his face being spun around, hit, like just standing in the pocket. Like, and he's not a large man. He's no, not he's a not. Large quarterback. He no. is a mid-sized to small quarterback. Small, so for him yeah. standing there, the way he stands. And the, the way he delivers the ball, it it does seem more impressive. It does feel more impressive. I know he ain't doing it on purpose, but when he said it, I couldn't unsee it. I'm like, <laughs> huh. Yeah. Is That's that so crazy. It's so crazy about? to think a guy like that, like 10 years ago, would just get like just the full body weight of no lineman on them and never play again. Like, but these guys now can just be the best players in the NFL, which is nice, which is nice. But uh, it's just crazy. Which is what you want. Um, so... Let's get back to the birds in the season. Uh, what's your over under on the season, Jason? Ten wins, over under, over. What do you got him at? Uh, I think they get to twelve wins. Twelve wins, barring health, obviously. But that that is like being said, right? Everybody knows that. Yeah, Harry, definitely over ten. Um, I've, I've been saying thirteen. I want to. I want to lean on the on the high side. Believe in the team. So I'll I'll stick with thirteen. So I'm thinking. 15 and two. Oof. I'll be so excited. Um, so here, here's my thing, right? If they, if they beat green Bay, I'm way closer to 15 and two. Yeah. Because I feel like as much as like what Jason said, the reason I can't argue with, and the reason I can't argue with pundits really is because the Packers are one of the premier teams at NFC. It, um, if who, who do we think are the premier teams? 
Uh, the Lions, the 49ers, Packers. the Packers. Sneaky Eagles. Bears, man. Sneaky Eagles. Bears could be good this year. Bears. I don't want to hear shit about the Bears you, yet. You picked them to win the division. <laughs> to win the division. I'm just talking about the yeah. top teams in the NFC. All right, all right. The NFC South. No one from the South. Nobody. nobody. Um, uh, I don't know. Whichever other NFC West team. People like the, the Rams a lot. That yeah, one, uh, people people sure. are throwing the Rams out there. So yeah. the Rams. And I, I did pick the Bears, but I'm just saying. The Bears. I'm, I'm gonna pick the Rams too. You picked the Rams too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I know what I did because a lot of that has to do with hate. And not of course, of course, of course. But um, and I, I do hope I'm yeah, I'm watching Hard Knocks. I do hope the Bears turn their life. No, I mean they're good. But I just mean like top five guaranteed. Yeah. Like how you're supposed to feel about it. Yeah. So the Packers are one of the harder teams in the Definitely. NFC to play. Opening your schedule, not at home, losing not the yet. value of a home game. I think that's tough. So if you come out and you beat them, then I feel like you get on that nice little roll with the rest of the schedule. And then going later on, the only team that I'm worried about, that I'm like straight up, hands down, it doesn't even matter what's going on. I'm just going to call it an L, is the Ravens. Yep. We're losing to the Ravens. Like I, it, it, don't, it don't matter what nobody say. And then you got to worry about Burrow. I don't know how healthy Burrow is going to be that late in the season. I'm not worried about him. No, me so either. Everybody else we play on the schedule, I'm like, if you, again, it sounds dumb. If you go out here and you whoop up on – the Packers, and you get this win, I feel like the confidence is going to carry this team because everything that we're saying and everything we're ignoring is true. We have the pain of last year on our back, and nothing anyone says yes. or does is going to fix it. Schwarber's third home run. And to- oh, my God. Yeah, oh my God. I mean, I was staring at the <laughs> cheesesteak chain. Cheese I was saying cheesesteak chain. Cheesesteak chain. I was I was staring at the game cast. It was it was a cat. AI cheesesteak chain. Can I get? Oh, I'm sorry. oh yeah, for real. Get that. I was gonna say. The, the count the count was one and two for like five minutes. The cheesesteak chain is what's gonna fix the season. Our idea just now. Damn. Is gonna fix. Schwarbambio. Let's go. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy uh, I always feel bad when stuff like that's happening because as you guys are talking, I'm like looking to my left and people are always confused. I'm looking. I saw your eyes looking. I was like, oh, what happened? I was like, what happened? Like, what's happening? I was like, my game, my, my, my app didn't load. My ESPN app's not loading. I was like, oh. Looks so unprofessional. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, and you reacted. You were like, yes, or something. Yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What a fucking comeback. Jesus. Yeah. Well, it's not over yet, right? No, you're right. You're right. But shoot. It I was gonna say, look. what's the Estevez uh, closer? Yeah. He's been, you know, he's all right. Yeah, 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 he showed up. So yeah, no, um, he's good. Um, yeah, he's solid for yeah. sure. Woo! Let's go. Um, <laughs> also, think about him, by the way. So in the first inning, right? He's watching that game at six one. He's like, "Well, that's it for me, boys. I'm done. I'm gonna go." <laughs> oh to my him. god, for real! Also, he's like, Yo, you're up. Like what? He's oh, been shit. warming up for the last three and four innings. Yeah. It's like, oh shit. I I forget. Um, oh, gosh. This is one of those things. I'm, my my memory is really good, but I can't remember who who it was because it's not a team that I care about. But there was a closer who uh, the game was so out of control he didn't think he was going to pitch, so he starts drinking. Oh you know? yeah, and yeah. He called him out, and he had to go out there and pitch. He's like, I pitched one of my best games ever, and I was like four beers deep. Damn. I was like, relax. That's awesome. Relax. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super chill. Like, yeah. yo, he started thinking like, maybe I should drink beers every time. He's like, I did not do that. I did not do. That. That's <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Not one more time. Yeah, it didn't yeah, work. It didn't work so, yeah. Um, yeah. Schwarbaum, literally um, over Baghdad. And then right, and instantly, uh, <laughs> Trey Turner strikes out immediately <laughs> no, after. I'm so look. Yeah. I'm uh, again for the for the people. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. Just for the people. Raising the series three four, and I didn't want to split. I wanted that George W. <laughs> a couple of games coming back from behind. I think we're back. I, I think they're finally in a nice groove. I think guys are dinged up, a lot of injuries. I think Taiwan Walker vibes are gone. I don't need to see a pitch <laughs> the rest of the year. He can tweet about it or do whatever he wants. Oh, to that's do. your. But uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that was my video. I had. Oh I, my god. I, had me not posted today, but I was ripping <laughs> Taiwan for like thirty seconds. And all that, deserved too. All, all, de- de- all deserved. Not for real. But he did come back and help the team out tonight, and that would have looked literally. It would have been like six hours later. <laughs> he gave up two runs, though. He gave up two runs. Yeah, no, he wasn't hey, awesome. Today, he, he, wasn't hey. the, he wasn't. He wasn't the problem. He did the job. He wasn't yeah, the problem. Yeah. He's the bridge. And he, and you know how the internet is. They would have just ripped me a new one. So uh, it it worked out in my favor. I was like, oh man, I didn't post it. I was like, ah, okay. So now I can make a new Phillies video tonight. And <laughs> yeah, shoot. Uh, adjust my Taiwan. <laughs> Damn, Harper struck out too. Fuck. Yeah. 
Bryce is Bry- two zero. Bryce needs to have a seat. Yeah, started out two zero and then struck out. I don't. I hate that. Yeah, I hate that. Oh, Turner struck out faster than I mean. I didn't even blink. And he struck I know out. we were celebrating still in Turner. Literally, was out, was it was one two in Schwarber's count longer than longer than Turner's hold it back. He was piling everything off. Yeah, oh, God. Harper needs Harper needs a break. Harper needs a yeah. rest. I need I need him ready to go for the postseason, and I don't want to hear anything negative about Bryce not coming up in clutching moments. Yeah, because if he's hurt, that's going to be a problem. It or is. he's playing with anything, that's going to be a problem. I mean, that's um, so uh, yeah. But uh, other than the fifteen and two start, I'm I'm going with uh, I'll go with the the twelve wins too. Also, I, definitely over ten. Um, it's so funny because if you're betting the odds, either the Eagles are going to win seven wins or they're going to get twelve wins. Like the the odd the the, the betting is yeah. almost. I mean, they win a division. It's five fifty plus five fifty, and them not winning over seven and a half games is plus five fifty. Like that's so weird. That's so weird. Um, yes, John Peace, when Bum is back, sit Bryce for ten days. I'm with that. I'm about that life. Uh, let's get her done. Um, yeah, but you just said the twelve wins is like what feels the most realistic to me. But again, I do I do feel like we have the juice to kind of get a little bit better. That's why I'm leaning thirteen. But like you said, hey, I, I mean Ravens, like for sure. Splitting with the Cowboys, probably. Yeah. And I'm big on splitting with the Redskins. I mean, the, the Commandos or whatever. I'm big on that. I just think we always lose one game to them, but. We ain't splitting with no. We, we, we split. <laughs> I told you what's going to happen. I know me. you told me, but I'm told you again. <laughs> We're splitting with the Commandos. Dobby Dobby Dobson Free is giving us. All oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. All right, all right. All right. And they ain't got Hinky Binky. They ain't got. All right. Howard. Fifteen and two. If we don't split with them, yeah, that's right. I'm not, ain't no, ain't no split. I'm not. <laughs> I, like, I like your fifteen and two because you're like sweeping the division. I'm like, I know. Yo, I know. <laughs> I know. Yo, I, hey, look, look. Uh, the, I, I didn't even say it, but he, Harry knew what it was. We <laughs> <laughs> the Cowboys. Gonna be exactly. Always, yeah. And, and, and Jerry balanced. World. Yep. yep we always lose the Jerry World. So uh, I put that as a guaranteed loss. And I put, <laughs> I put the Ravens as a guaranteed loss. I, I tell you what. If we beat the Ravens, we're going to the Super Bowl. Oh yeah. If, we, if I don't care if we're seven and whatever it is by the time we get there, if we beat the Ravens and go eight and four at the time, I'm guaranteeing Super Bowl victory. Ravens are good. Is the Super Bowl the, somewhere fun this year? Isn't it? I don't know, know actually. Orleans, somewhere fun. That means yeah. the Eagles. New Orleans. Are okay. In a stupid city. Oh, shut up! <laughs> I did that. What? Today, yo, you suck, bro. You are a dream killer, and I'm normally a dream killer. I love. Killing dreams. I know it's funny. You've been I, trying to I, feed I, us. I love killing dreams. I love making people feel bad about themselves. As an overweight man with a gap tube, I love making other people feel bad about themselves. But you, sir, today are taking all of my joy. Horrible, evil. You're person. always right. You're from the future. I am from not. the future. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. Steal my joy. So let me play my role. Now, uh, what did I say? Bring an angry Super Bowl. And, Super Ravens. Bowl okay. after they beat the Ravens because the Ravens aren't even great to good, but w- whatever it is about Lamar Jackson, he does not lose to the NFC. Right. He don't lose the NFC. It's so weird. He barely loses it all. Like, not for nothing. Let's just talk about this real quick. So opening t- this week is uh, the Chiefs and the Ravens. Thursday that, night. That is, I, I'm going to be all locked in on that game. I don't care what's going on. That game is going to be so crucial. Uh, the, for the Ravens to win them, just to have it in their spirit to feel like they're doing something. Doesn't mean anything, doesn't mean they're going to be the postseason, but Lamar Jackson can't pass for shit. But their defense and his speed combined are two of the most lethal things in the NFL. Mm-hmm. When he's healthy, I don't know anybody has a better record than him. Um, not off the top of my head. I can't think of it. Head, he's got one of the best records, and mostly because his dominance is against the NFC, but the AFC has a problem dealing with them too. Oh yeah. So adding Derrick Henry, who is an old dog, but with a line that's <laughs> kind of retooled a little bit, we're gonna find out. But oh, man, I'm I'm. That's Henry's gonna be- have a good year. Henry's gonna have a big yeah. year for sure. Because yeah. the one thing the Ravens know how to do is run the ball. And he's and he is he is rejuvenated or whatever. He's energized by being with Lamar. Like you hear the he talk on podcasts. It's like he's he's ready to be a dog. So so it's two uh, to three yeah. years removed, but it's the same thing I keep saying about Saquon Barkley. 
when you are the best player on a crappy team and you yeah. don't have a quarterback and you don't have any help, yeah, you can go out there and beat King Henry and you can get the ball every once in a while for a flea flicker and you can run over 92 people. But when your defense doesn't help you at all, after you've broken your back for four quarters, it kills your momentum. Yeah. When you've gone out there and put up three touchdowns and everybody in the fantasy world is like, Henry, Henry, <laughs> and the defense can't stop a wet paper bag, it's rough. Mm -hmm. So for him to go from that to – the Purple Monsters, yeah, the okay. Monsters, whatever they call themselves out there, Raven Flock, whatever, you know what I mean, Gang Bang, whatever they do. Um, it, it, <laughs> he's, hey! You know what they call? You know what they call a group of crows or ravens? Well, a murder? A group, a group of crows is a murder, but I'm pretty sure ravens are close enough. So that's you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's excited, and, that, and that's what Saquon's walking into, going out there and putting in all that work with no quarterback on a crappy turf. That's why Jacobs went to Green Bay and didn't go to. Um, the Giants. Yeah. The Giants offered him four million dollars more per year. He's like, between the taxes and that turf, I'll take Green Bay. You see, he's like Kansas City wanted him too, but he just hates them because he was a Raider. Damn, that's kind of crazy. Like, or the Packers paid a little bit more. I was right? gonna say that's probably what happened because I go play with yeah. Mahomes <laughs> yeah. any day of the week. You can hate the Chiefs because you're a Raider. You got drafted by the Raiders, but you know Patrick Mahomes, movie. Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. <laughs> I'm gonna go there. Yeah. Middle of the ninth. Um, I'm just going to go here and say it because we're about to hop off. The Phillies are locked to get this George W. Knock on wood. I believe. I believe. Estevez got this. The Phillies are back. Um, ending statements on the Eagles Packers game, Harry. Anything you want to say to the people? Bird Anything? gang, go birds. Never in doubt. We got this. Don't worry about nothing. We got it. Harry's always positive. <laughs> Jason. Your negative Nelly. Brazil. Anything, anything you want to Brazil. And <laughs> anything you want to say to to the people, to the Eagles? Hey man, don't worry. I'm always wrong. The Eagles are gonna win big. <laughs> he is always wrong. Always wrong. <laughs> so, I'm the mush. Um, <laughs> so uh, tomorrow night you can catch your boy on uh, PHLY. I'm doing a show with E Rock and Jason Ashworth. Um, it's a supposed to be an all sports show, but it's very eagle centric. There's an eagle guys, and uh, we're gonna be breaking down the game again. And uh, I'm probably gonna end up being the one negative Nelly with those guys because they're super positive, so it's gonna make me feel a certain way. And now Jason's hurt my heart, so you got all the negative points from us today. I, yeah, I, I expect I prepping you. That's I, yeah, nice. I, good friends. I expect to be raised <laughs> out tomorrow. Um, that'll be live on their network tomorrow at seven, that'll be once a week uh, for an hour. So uh, I'll be here with you guys first on uh, Gritty Nights like we do and then be doing that. So that'll be fun. And uh, the cheap seats. The cheap seats. Hey, that's an amateur seat. That's why I keep you around. <laughs> person. But as far as the Eagles are concerned, again, everybody has a right to feel the way that they feel. But I know that they don't want to come back home and hear dumbasses like me with a podcast. They don't want to see tweets from losers who have nothing else to do all week. They don't want to come back here and be destroyed. Right. There is something different about the, the Green Bay vibe and they'll support the team and they give guys a chance and they, you know everybody owns a seat and all that kind of crap. Their mojo and the way they feel is totally different. And just like somebody who I love with all my heart, even though it's a pain in the ass, but he is the most realest person ever, Nick Cassianos. They love you here. And they'll boo you here. Yeah, that's what we do. It, and it's, but it's because they love you that they'll boo you. Yeah. And the fact that he says it out loud often helps me understand that as a fan, it's okay to boo my team. When you're not performing well, you that's what happens. Yeah. If you if you are at home every day and your husband doesn't take out the trash or load the dishwasher, after a while you're gonna say something, right? You're not just gonna be all happy, go lucky, like, well, he's my husband, it's okay. Uh, bro. What's the problem? How how do we fix it? Like, what's going? Do you need assistance? Like, there's a reason why that happens with people. So, as far as the Eagles are concerned, I get why everybody feels the way that they do. But 34, 17, fuck the Packers, go Birds. Let's get this George W. Because my stress level can't handle it. We have a game on Friday, guys. That means we'd have nine days straight yeah. Friday night lights without football. <laughs> If they lose, if they oh order, my god, if they order, <laughs> if, if, Nick, if that's what you want to say to the team, be like, Yo, bro, we got to win this game. Yes, 10 long. hour flight home, <laughs> nine <laughs> days of media. What do you want to hear about? Yeah, Quinn Young getting that interception or not? Like, 
What are we oh doing? Oh my god. So Saquon, show up, show out, show why you got that money, dance on the NBA, uh, NFL, and, and make people feel happy about all their fantasy picks because he would hide a lot of fantasy draft picks this year. So a lot of people believe, and I believe, and I don't care what Jason say. 40 yard touchdown. Pick one. We're getting that Ooh. George Woo! We're out.